he does it so gracefully and so charmingly and so charismatically saying all the right things that I think many people um, have kind of stardust in their eyes about what, what actually has not changed and in some ways gotten worse. His Justice Department made the same argument about the State Secrets Act uh, that, you know, that, that they won't disclose information about torture against detainees because of claiming state secrets privilege that the Bush Justice Department made. Well, in May, President Obama reversed his decision to release uh, torture photos of Iraqi detainees. Now, those photos reportedly depict uh, many prisoners uh, being sexually abused and sexually tortured by U.S. soldiers. Now, the U.S. president said... These photos that were requested in this case uh, are not particularly sensational, uh, especially when compared to the painful images that we remember from Abu Ghraib. What is not as well known is the sexualization of the torture. But when you make the case to the American people that the systemic torture included being a rape of prisoners with objects, with light sticks, rape of women, rape of children, that this was videotaped, um, and that there's a, you know, basically evil unfolding, that it's a sick, perverse mentality uh, being played out systemically. Uh, the individuals who were involved uh, have been identified and appropriate actions have been taken. It's therefore my belief that the publication of these photos would not add any additional benefit to our understanding of what was carried out in the past by a small number of individuals. In fact, the most direct consequence of releasing them I believe would be to further inflame anti-American opinion. Rape of women, rape of children. And I want to emphasize that these photos that were requested in this case are not particularly sensational, especially when compared to the painful images that we remember from Abu Ghraib. Uh, the Second Circuit Court ruled in December of 2008 um, that the photos had to be released. The previous administration uh, lost a court case on that. The Department of Justice decided, uh, based on the ruling, that it was hopeless to appeal. Uh, a mandate ordering the release of those photos came Monday, and uh, uh, the administration, the Pentagon, and the court entered into an agreement uh, to release those photos. But the mere fact that you have the legal power to keep something secret does not mean you should always use it. The Freedom of Information Act is perhaps the most powerful instrument we have for making our government honest and transparent. And that's my decision uh, to argue against the release of additional detainee photos. Uh, understand these photos are associated with closed investigations of the alleged abuse of detainees in our ongoing war effort. For a long time now, there's been too much secrecy in this city. The old rules said that if there was a defensible argument for not disclosing something to the American people, then it should not be disclosed. That era is now over. Starting today, every agency and department should know that this administration stands on the side, not of those who seek to withhold information, but those who seek to make it known. You're saying the people in the CIA who followed through on what they were told was legal, they should not be prosecuted, but why not the Bush administration lawyers well, again, who, in, in the eyes of a lot of your supporters on the left, twisted the law, why are they not well, being held accountable? The way to make government responsible is to hold it accountable. And the way to make government accountable is to make it transparent so that the American people can know exactly what decisions are being ma made, how they're being made, and whether their interests are being well served. I'm amazed. I'm also. amazed at you people who call for openness and transparency. No and one has even heard the questions. It doesn't matter. It's the <laughs> process. We have left open the system. It's a pen of controlling the press. How so? Is there any evidence currently going on that I'm controlling the press? No. Poorly, I might add. <laughs> Your formal engagements are prepackaged. How so? Well, and controlling How so? the public. Like calling That's reporters the... the night before to tell them they're going to be called on? <laughs> that is shocking. Uh, I, I, we've had this discussion ad nauseum. And, uh, of course you would, because you don't have any answers. Uh, well, uh, when you talk about America's image around the world, the president has talked a lot about that as well. What signal does it send the world if potentially people in the Bush administration, as far as potentially broke the law? This administration is now saying we're too busy 
There's a lot on our plate, obviously. This argument's been out there, but we're not going to. You said we can't look back. We won't look forward. Right, but the administration didn't say they were too busy, Ed. The administration on the second day of a very busy day, in a very busy week, in a very busy, 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 busy. Barack Obama campaigned on promises of restoring the rule of law, restoring the Constitution, rolling back, you know, closing Guantanamo. And in many ways, the gestures he's made since he's been in office are symbolic. He committed to closing Guantanamo. I was there two weeks ago. They're building it up. I have said repeatedly that I intend to close Guantanamo, and I will follow through on that. He hasn't rolled back the Patriot Act. The Patriot Act is still in force. The surveillance apparatus is still in force. For all we know, you know, journalists were being surveilled under the Bush administration. For all we know, that's still continuing. He is pushing for preemptive detention, which is an absolute foundation stone of a police state. So we are by no means back to America as the founders envisioned it, America, premised on the Constitution and the rule of law. In May, President Obama reversed his decision to release torture photos of Iraqi detainees. Now, those photos reportedly depict many prisoners being sexually abused and sexually tortured by U.S. soldiers. Now, the U.S. president said that he could not disclose those photos because he would be putting U.S. soldiers in danger from the backlash that might occur. It's a very important issue to bring up, Marina. Thank you. It has not gotten nearly the scrutiny it deserves. Belatedly, America is waking up to the fact that the torture that was endemic in Guantanamo, in Abu Ghraib, at Bagram, U.S. held prisons around the world, black sites, wasn't just the work of a few bad apples, as Bush claimed, but was directed from the top. Now there's documented evidence that Rumsfeld, Rice, Cheney, and Bush himself knew about the torture, directed the torture, created a structure to disseminate the torture. I mean, this is very relevant for a Russian audience because Guantanamo, the design of it was based on Stalin's gulag, and the functioning of it was based on the gulag. And many of the famous stress positions, extremes of hot and cold, dousing detainees with water, isolation, these were all techniques taken, you know, perfected by Stalin and, you know, reproduced by dictators subsequently. But what is not as well known is the sexualization of the torture. But when you make the case to the American people that the systemic torture included in a rape of prisoners with objects, with light sticks, rape of women, rape of children, that this was videotaped, and that there's a, you know, basically evil unfolding, that it's a sick, perverse mentality being played out systemically, it is very difficult to maintain that posture. So it's well documented that these photographs exist. And you're quite right that Obama said that he would release them. And let me note, it's not up to him, right? And if you really have the rule of law, these images are not entertainment to be released or withheld depending on the political winds. They're evidence of crime. And he doesn't have the power to withhold them. But you're quite right that now, because of pressure probably from the CIA, because they are implicated in the torture as well as the military, up and down the chain of command, and they don't want to be prosecuted. All of these things are flatly illegal. You offer no change. You have the same foreign policy. You want more troops in Afghanistan. You're not talking about only going to war with a declaration. You don't want to deal with the monetary financial crisis in this country. You want to keep, you know, the system together for the benefit of the banks and the big corporations and the politicians, you know, that argument. And what kind of change do you have on social policy? Do you care about sick people using marijuana? I mean, have you come out for that? Let's be honest here. It is just as bad to prevent the investigation and prosecution of a war crime is its commission because you become part of it. There's no question about a war crime here. There's no need for a truth commission. We, you know, some people say, what do you need, a film? We actually had films. 
of us torturing people. So this would be the shortest investigation in history. You have Bush officials who have said that we tortured people. We have interrogators who have said we have tortured people. The Red Cross has said it. A host of international organizations have said it. This is the most well-defined and publicly known crime I've seen in my lifetime. There's no debate about it. There's no ambiguity. It's well known. You've got people involved who have basically admitted the elements of a war crime that we are committed to prosecute. Hey, get out of here. Nice. Now, where were we? That was pretty impressive, wasn't it? I got it. I got the second. What do you think, Gibbs? That is very good. It's on. It's right there. It's right there. You want to film that? There it is.